Welcome to Healthy Frontiers. My name is Dr. Bizzoni. I'm a chiropractor, and this show is dedicated to the education of our viewers. The topic for tonight is Taking a Journey with Trainer Katie Fanick, and my special guest is Katie Fanick. Let me tell you a little bit about Katie. Katie is a certified personal trainer and group fitness instructor living right here in Westchester County. She has been living and working here as a trainer for seven years. In addition to her fitness certifications, Katie holds a BA in theater and dance from Muhlenberg College. Currently, Katie keeps herself busy with her home studio in Elmsford, where she instructs open studio classes, in addition to training small group teams and even one-on-one -on -one clients. So I'd like to welcome Katie to the show. Hi, Hi. thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Katie. Thank you. Let me ask you, let's get right into it, okay? All right. All right, you ready? Sure. There we go, all right. So Bring it we, on. Yeah, okay. Were you always into fitness, and uh, what did you do before personal training? No, I was not always into fitness. It's probably, being a personal trainer is like the farthest job like anyone would ever think that I was going to have. Right. I, I didn't like gym, I didn't like running around so much, um, but I was a dancer, so right. I liked moving in that way. Yes. And um, there's a funny story, like a family story, that I was dancing before I was born. Oh. <laughs> so my mom was a nurse, she is a nurse, and during her residency, they work like so much, yes. right? Oh, There's for sure. All nights, days, you never know where you are in the week, you know, back to back shifts. So now she's pregnant doing right. this. And apparently, I was a great baby in utero while she was at work. Right. So whenever she was moving, I was okay. Then she'd be like, oh, thank God, now I can come home and go to sleep. And that's when I'd start like kicking and moving and oh. not letting her sleep. <laughs> I was only happy when she was moving. And then when I was born, I was a terrible baby. I heard screaming my head off all the time and picking me up did not, did not do it. You had to be dancing. <laughs> you had oh, okay. to be moving you know, in a swing in the pool or whatever. Yes. So they were always dancing with me. And so as the story goes, I was dancing before I was born. I love it. It's great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so I also did um, some so, you know, professional training in dance as well. I started yes. the classes when I was maybe two or three. Oh, and okay. um, dance maybe 20 hours a week mm -hmm. when I was in middle school and high school. Yes. And funny enough, uh, that got me out of gym class. Oh, so, uh, it did. I, it did. I got a okay. study hall instead because I spent so much time dancing. Right. So even then, I, I was like, oh, I don't have to go to gym. I'm, I'm a dancer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I loved it so much that I went on to, you know, into college and uh, right. got my degree in, in dance yeah, in theater and dance with concentrations in um, directing and composition yes okay. so I was a, a theater person right, before uh, before I ever got into fitness and, yeah. and learned about it oh terrific so how did you get into fitness and personal training then what, what what brought you into that arena well, that's an interesting story no tell us so um, my best friend Christine from college she was working in the city and she saw an advertisement for auditions for this show called Dance Your Ass Off. Okay. And it was on the Oxygen channel, and it was kind of like Dancing with the Stars meets Biggest Loser. So okay. every week, you know, it's the competition, and you have to lose weight and perform a dance, and you get a score, and someone gets eliminated. Yes. So my friends were like, well, Katie, this is perfect for you. Right. You know, you have to dance and lose weight, and I always yeah. had struggled with my weight and always danced. and. I kicked and screamed and they were like, we're not going to be friends with you if you don't go to this audition, this right. perfect thing for you. So I nearly missed the train to get to the city for the audition. I was like, I don't really have to go, do I? No, we're not going to talk to you anymore. Yep. So I eventually, I, I kicking and screaming, I get there. Right. And I'm waiting on this long line, you know, people f for the sure. audition. And people were actually coming up to us and asking, like, are they giving free donuts out? Huh. Thinking the only reason, like, heavy people standing in a line yes. would yes. be there for free food. Right. <laughs> so so I, I went and I, I did the first day and I got called back for the next day. Mm -hmm. And I, I got called back for the next day. And, then, uh, and, and I, I never got cut. I right. made it on to the show. Wonderful. And I, I'm Katie Fanick from Dance, Dance Your Ass Off Season 2 oh, on the Oxygen Channel. I love it. I and, love it. Oh. Well, I, excitingly, I yep. lost the most weight out of um, all the women of, mm -hmm. on that season. It was 60 pounds in 14 weeks. 
Terrific. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's where I started learning, like about personal about training, exercise, and exercise and, and you know, like had my first moment with a personal trainer. And yes. when I got back from the show, uh, I was like, "What am I going to do to keep this up?" Yeah. Sure. And my mom said, "Well, there's jazzercise around the corner." Yeah. And I was like. Mom, really? Like jazzercise? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you went to do that. But right. I was like, all right, all right, okay. I'll go. So I went and I did really have a lot of fun. And yes. after the first class, they, they were like, do you want to teach this? Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I get a free membership too. Right, right, <laughs> so right, sure. I, I did Perfect. all the training and got certified to teach jazzercise and, right. and did that. And with, with that program, you really do need to stand up on the stage in front of everybody and do exactly what they've taught you to do. Versus, yes. like, I couldn't slow the music down or get off the stage to help someone or show them right. really what I'm talking about versus just verbally cueing. Mm -hmm. And I had just lost all this weight thinking it was impossible to do, that I could never do that without some surgery or something, and really wanted to help people do that. And yep. I felt like I wasn't, wasn't doing that from up on that stage. Right. So that's when I decided, all right, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go get a personal training certification so I can really interact better with people perfect. and help them. Perfect, perfect. So what do you love the most about personal training? Well, I love helping people. Okay. Right? Um, that's really what shifted me from this love of theater and dance. You yes. know, I thought that this was a way I could really connect and help people. And from this experience of being so heavy and and dancing and learning exercises um, for the first time I understand what it's like to think that oh I'm not ready to join a gym I'm not ready to try a class I could never work out with a personal trainer right. I don't know anything about how to do these exercises the, there was a day we worked on side planks in the dance your ass off like workout yes. And I looked at this man like, you have 12 heads. Like, you want me to pick my hips? Have you seen my hips? You think I can pick <laughs> them up off the floor like that? Like, you're out of your mind. So I've been there so many times. Like, you have an assessment on your first day, and they put you in the squat rack and, you right. know, they or not, you know, leg press. And, um, right. you know, it's someone who's overweight, you're like, my stomach's in the way. Or you get on the floor and like, oh, my chest is choking me. I can't breathe. Yep. I understand where they're coming from. I, been there mm -hmm. and I really think I can help Good. so That's what those are the you. people I really want to like you could do help. it I'll sure. show you how it will be okay you don't have to feel ready right you know there's never that perfect time like today is the perfect time Got let's it. get going on it perfect so what's the craziest thing that ever happened during the session all right so <laughs> I'm working at a gym and early on mind you in my career and you know, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of trainers at the gym. I like working with the people that have, you know, a whole bunch of injuries and, and mm -hmm. think, you know, they can't, they can't do it. I, I, I have a lot of injuries that I've found out how to, you know, strengthen all my muscles. And I have back issues and ankle surgery reconstructed. Um, so don't worry, we can, we, can do, we can do everything. But one of the things I wasn't really doing with, the, with those clients mm -hmm. was flipping tires. Mm -hmm. You know those big tractor... Yes big tractor tires that people are jumping over them and flipping them and pushing them up hills and hitting them with sledgehammers. Mm -hmm. That wasn't really, that was like more the football trainers kind of Training. apparatus, right, you right, know. Right. So I was, was hesitant to try that. Mm -hmm. So I, I was encouraged to do it and so I practiced it a little and then I, I picked someone I thought would enjoy that kind of a workout, took her out on the hill. <laughs> we, we were having a great time, we got the tire up the hill and now she's on one side of the tire. I'm on the other side of the tire, and we're rolling it back down the hill to do it again. Right. And that tire just starts to pick up speed yeah. and just keeps getting keeps faster and faster and faster. And what's at the bottom of the hill? Central Avenue. Oh. So that tire ran into Central oh Avenue, boy. and and it, and it did hit one car and then just fell over, okay. and no one was hurt. And I sent lots of Harry and David gift baskets after that moment. Oh, that was but sweet. But I was like, what? So now you know. If yeah. you're ever working with the tire, when you come back down the hill, you walk behind the tire. Uh, right. Yeah, that's, that's how you come good. down the hill. Okay. So <laughs> how many times a week does the average person need to work out to see the results they're looking for? What have you found? I've found that 
four days is probably like the minimum we want to be looking at. Right. You could work out five or six right. days a week if you wanted. I think seven is too much. You really need a day of rest somewhere right. in there. Um, but two days a week, or two hours, let's say, a week, is yes. really going to only help you maintain mm -hmm. what, you've, what you've achieved or, you know, not really progress you, especially at the rate that you hope, seems like people want to be seeing their results. Yeah. So four days a week would be good. Mixing that up between strength training and cardio. Yes. If you're in a class that's doing both, um, maybe you have two of those a week, and then let's say your favorite thing is spin, a cycle right. class. You don't want to cut that out. So that's, that's a cardio day, but it's something you love. So you don't want to only be spinning as some people mm -hmm. do. Uh, you want to try some new stuff, but make yeah. sure, don't be miserable. Like, do the thing you want to do as well, yes. and then and then mix it up. Throw a yoga in there, or Pilates, or bar, or Zumba, or something different. Got it. And mixing the cardio and strength and flexibility all That's in there. Is it okay to do those on the same day? The cardio it, and strength. Do you find yes. that's a better approach, or do you like to separate the days? Um, a lot of my clients are looking for weight loss, mm -hmm. so I like to include um, high intensity interval training, mm -hmm. where. We don't rest, maybe we work out for at least five minutes straight before resting, and it's going back and forth between more high intensity cardio and then lower intensity with some strength. Yes. And I'm finding that's a really good balance for everybody. Perfect. Okay, so uh, it, as regards to exercise, yeah. uh, what have you found to be the most incorrectly executed exercise or exercises? Well, um, the two that you hear about are squats, and planks right. and you might see them you know shown on Good Morning America or you know some yeah. you know just a, a little blurb and those are the two that get, get done incorrectly where you could really get hurt yes okay so we're gonna watch a video and see how to do it correctly yes we are okay all right so now we're ready to look at a squat all right yes. so let's start with our feet apart and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hips back with the weight in the heels keeping our chest up and then we're going to exhale as we stand up and squeeze our glutes. Okay? So weight goes back into the heels. Good. And then exhale and squeeze. So now one of the things that normally happens is everyone kind of just drops down. Their hips aren't really involved. And the knees come forward. And the weight goes in the toes. Mm -hmm. So now we're pressing forward into our knees and we're hurting them. Yes. And that's really one of the ways that people get hurt doing squats when it's this common exercise that we do all the time. Yes. Right? Sure. So the weight in the heels is the really important part and to start with the hips instead of starting with your knees. Perfect. Right? Should we try a couple? Yes. Let's, let's do have a, a set. I'm let's ready. have a set of five. Let's do it. All right. So okay. we go back and now we breathe in and then exhale. <sighs> Good. Put your hips even farther back. Way back. Way like we're in Grand Central and we don't really want to sit on that toilet. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Way back, way back. There we go. Awesome. And exhale and up. Good. We got three more. So we breathe in. Weight into the heels and breathe out. Good. Two more. Breathe it in. And out. Last one. Here we go. Breathe it in. Oh, put chips back. Way back. There it is. And up. Yay. Perfect. All right. So that's the squat. Good. So one of the other things that are, is a very common exercise, but often done incorrectly, is the center plank. So we always hear about the center plank. Yes. So there's really two ways we can do it. We can do it on our hands or on our elbows. Fine. All right? So okay. if we're on our hands, we come down, we bring our feet back. Now yep. the important part is to keep our shoulders okay. over our hands. A lot of times this is where we are, and we're kind of more in a downward dog or like a pyramid with our booty up. So we want to lean forward. The other place we can be is on the elbows. So here we still want to have our shoulders over the elbows. Right. So sometimes we're up here and we're pushing way back. So we've got to lean forward, holding our abs in. And then the other problem that happens is the hips drop. And now all the pressure is in your low back. So we want to pull the abs in and up. And then remember to breathe Perfect. while we're there. Right. Thank and that you. way we won't hurt our back and we will strengthen our core and strengthen our back. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Thank you. I like it. Thank okay. you. So Katie, how do you get the most out of working with a personal trainer? Well, I think you need to find the right person. They should be certified and should be someone that you connect with, that you feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. so that you can really share 
your goals and what your struggles are and the stuff you like. Mm -hmm. um, and you really want to do the homework. So when someone you know suggests something, you you found someone that you are comfortable in in do taking their advice, yes. and they're giving it to you for a reason. So even if you're skeptical of how that is going to help you, mm -hmm. there's a reason that that person is telling you to do it. So let's say um, someone wants to work on sit-ups, right? And you've you've talked to your trainer about the stuff you have at home, and now they're giving you some homework. Right. So You've said you have ankle weights at home. Okay, great, you have ankle weights. So I want you to put those ankle weights on, stand up, pull your knees towards your chest. And you're like, Th this person's crazy. Like, I, I want to get better at, at sit-ups. How, how is standing, pulling my knees to my chest going to help? Right. Well, they've probably assessed that you have weak hip flexors. Mm -hmm. And those are very necessary to be able to do sit-ups. So mm -hmm. this exercise is going to strengthen those hip flexors that you need to be able to do the sit-ups. Right. So you want to do what they're telling you to do. If you don't know why, ask. Mm -hmm. Don't just skip and be like, oh, that's not going to help me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you really need to connect with the, uh, with the trainer pretty well. And yeah. And feel comfortable and listen to them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Have a nice rapport right. and back and forth. Right. Have you found that someone, I'm sure this is true, is, that works with a personal trainer gets more benefit than when they're on their own or is that really not true? I, I think it is true that you're going to get better results faster from working with a per personal trainer. It's really specific to what you need. Your workouts are written for what your goals are and where your weakest you know want to want to strengthen right. and yeah, well, on your sense. own you you're not getting pushed. You can't push yourself the same way. Yeah. Like trainers need people to work out with or you know someone to train them too. Right. Like we're all we don't want to. We don't want to work that hard, yeah. right? Like it's okay. really hard to push yourself to your to your own limit on your own. Yes. Okay. So, so the trainer can help you get there totally. a little quicker. Yes. Than you would on your own. Yeah. Great. You're gonna work so, harder. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some tips for staying active? So I really like all of the fitness trackers. I think that they're really helpful. Mm -hmm. So I use them. The Apple Watch. Uh, there's also. Do you have like a Fitbit or? Or something? No. Have you? No. Okay. Well, so the <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. Um, I think the best ones uh, track your heart rate as well. It gives you much more accurate mm -hmm. numbers. Um, one of the cool things that it does that I think would be helpful, even if you don't have it, is it it beeps when I haven't stood in an hour. Right. So standing every hour is yeah. is really helpful. Becoming we're just becoming more sedentary. Yeah. So we just need to move more. Right. So standing up every hour, you can set an alarm in your phone or just watch the clock or um, right. get up and move. Things you've heard before like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Now if yep. your knees are killing you, that's not the day to take the stairs. Or if you have a lot of stairs, maybe you're only going to walk up the first flight and then right. you get in the elevator. And then after yep. a week, you walk up two flights of stairs, right. you get in the elevator, then you try three. Small leaps and bounds. Yeah, like l little baby steps, but just yep. you know, keeping yourself moving. Right. One, one of the things I used to do is in like your cable box, yes. right? Whatever service you have, there is a section of like free workouts. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it takes a little time to like find where it is in the menu, right? Right. Um, and then I would, I'd find, okay, well, I'm going to have 20 minutes tomorrow that I want, I want to do something. So I'll, I'll read the blurbs, see how long they are and add to, add to cart. Uh -huh. And so it has like, now you have like a little playlist of videos right. that you looked at that you know how long they are and you know are yes. what what you want to be doing and then that way the next day you can you know you're already in your workout clothes and you got your water and all you have to do is hit play if you have to find it right then like most likely yeah, you're not you, going to do it you're going to be like oh, there are, those are my 20 minutes that you know they're up now so right. you can pick a couple for the week you know mix it up that strength cardio and flexibility you know put all that in there at something you like Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's a Perfect. nice, like, free option. And then the last thing I'd say is every week I write workouts for my clients, but I, I put them up on, on social media as well. So uh, Facebook and Instagram and, yeah. and all of that. It's a, about a 40-minute normally workout, and uh, you can do it at home. You don't need any equipment. 
and that's available to anyone. Oh, that's so great. Come follow me, and you that's can great. have a workout every week. Oh my to help gosh! Help you stay active. That's great. Activity. Gotta yeah. Keep it going. Thanks. What are some tips to eating healthy, Katie? Um, two two main things for for health. There is hydration and nutrition. Right. So. We, we often hear... Which a lot of people forget the hydration part. Yes, yes, totally. Uh, you know, you're drinking one cup of water throughout the day. That's not really what we're looking for. Sure. So half of your body weight in ounces is, mm -hmm. is the goal. Uh, you can also, 64 to 68 ounces can, mm -hmm. can work too if you're maybe you know, 135 pounds or something. But if you're heavier, you do need to drink more. I try to go for three liters right. a day, like 100 right. ounces is, yeah. is generally my goal. And right. that's just going to help your whole body function better, mm -hmm. to help your brain work better, you're going to yep. feel better, sure. you know, everything happens better. Sure. Um, and then in regards to food and nutrition, there's a lot of fad diets out there. Yep. But one of, you know, and they'll work for a little bit, but right. then we, we put it back, we put that weight back on, yes. right? Because it's not a healthy lifestyle, it's losing weight for an event or something. Yes. But one of the things that they all have in common, which will work for the healthy lifestyle long term, is eating whole, minimally processed foods. Right. And you're not cutting a whole food group out. So mm -hmm. we, we need to eat carbs and fats and proteins. We don't want to just cut all the fat out. We need, yeah. we need healthy fats. So we right. don't want to cut all the carbs out you right. know, and just eat protein. We, we need a mix of stuff. And keeping them more whole and unprocessed is going to be best. Mm -hmm. And we want to have a variety of colors too. Mm -hmm. So make a rainbow, I tell my little, okay. my little ones with right. your plate. We're making a rainbow on our plate so we don't want to eat you know, just green. We want to have some greens and some reds and some orange. Put it yeah. all on your plate there. Perfect, perfect. So, what in your in your facility? Mm -hmm. What is a small group training, and what are the perks about joining a team, and what hours are available for teams? So well, so one of the things I do at my home studio is small group training teams because they're all committed to mm -hmm. working out together, and they've formed this team. So we, we do up to four people on a team, right. and they decide as a group what days or times you know, that they want to meet. Normally, it's twice a week for an hour, right. and so it's you and three of your closest friends or soon-to-be right. best friends. Mm -hmm. And I find that that team mentality really helps keep people accountable, showing up, mm -hmm. working hard. You don't want to let your team down. Right. Um, yep. And they'll decide that how long their their group is going to you know meet for uh, for at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I work Monday through Saturday, yeah. 7 a.m. to 8:30 p.m. So really, whenever they want to meet, we can we can find a time that works, and it's really right. flexible. Right. Uh, you know, let's say I have a group that's Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Monday holidays. That screws right. with our teams. Yeah. <laughs> so if people aren't working, but they have maybe like a barbecue, you know, or yeah. something, and everyone wants to meet in the morning, we meet in the morning. Or yeah. if everyone on Wednesday all have a dinner to go to, then we don't meet that day. We just put it on a different day. Perfect. So it, it's not stressful and supportive. Yeah. And then there's there's things that they get as freebies for for having that team and committing to them. So we have weekly recipes. I try to make the recipes on a Sunday to test them out. And then if they're good, they go up on the bulletin board as the recipe oh, of see. the week. Okay, that's great. And then uh, we have the weekly workouts that I post online as well. And most of my teams want to do um, weigh-ins. So mm -hmm. we'll have a weigh-in every week as most right. of their goals are, are revolved weight around loss, yeah. Yeah, weight loss. Mm -hmm. And then I also um, give them free periodical body composition scanning. Mm -hmm. So I have this really cool scale <laughs> that gives you your weight and then it you hold these handles and it sends this little electric you don't feel it signal around and how fast it moves through your body it's recording the density of everything. So it can yeah. figure out your body fat percent, muscle mass in pounds, how many pounds of muscle mm -hmm. on your body you have, visceral fat which is the fat around your organs. So it's important to track that number as well sure. uh, because extra fat around, you know, 
extra visceral fat leads to more diseases, sure. diabetes, heart disease, it's whatnot. A, yes. It also shows you how hydrated you are, oh, which, that's is, great. which yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. mm. Basal metabolic rate. Right. Uh, so that one sometimes can be a little confusing. So basal metabolic rate, if I was laying in bed all day, right. not doing anything, not burning any extra calories, moving, eating, or anything, this gives you, based on your current body composition, how many calories you burn in 24 hours at rest. Right. So that number can be helpful sure. um, if you're going to put that together with some nutrition and oh, want to sure. kind of get an idea of your expenditure. Sure. And we know that you know the more exercise you do during the day and you know you're going to at your body at rest is going to be burning more calories. So yes. I don't think a lot of people don't understand that. Yes. You so know? if you have more muscle on That's you too, right. you're going to be burning more calories than someone right. that has less muscle. That's right. Okay, Katie. So lastly, uh, how would someone contact you if they were interested in training or joining a team? Uh, well, you can visit my website, okay. katiefanicfitness.com, and find the button that says Contact Katie. Click and that's it. it. <laughs> and click it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, that was great. Thank oh, you. thank you so thank much you. for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And I want to thank our audience for being so attentive, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next show.